let's set up a restriction digestion it's a very simple method you need to open minus 20 freezer and take out append of tubes containing restriction enzyme restriction enzyme buffer dna that you want to cut and nucleus free water keep all the stuff that pulled that you pulled out of minus 20 into ice bucket you need only two equipments for the experiment a microfuge and a water bath essentially you need to measure and pipe it out restriction enzyme its buffer dna which is to be cut and nucleus free water into a small microfuge tube then give it a quick spin and subsequently fix the tube onto a floater and put it in water bath which is set at 37 degrees celsius that's it you need to incubate the tube for specified time which may go for one hour to overnight at the end of it your dna would be digested and ready to be loaded for dna gel electrophoresis so first let's do calculations involved in setting up a restriction digestion assay this will tell you how much of restriction enzyme buffer dna and water you need to add to your assay system let's imagine that you want to digest dna with bam h1 restriction enzyme numerous companies manufacture bam h1 however let's imagine you are interested in buying it from new england biolabs or neb bam h1 recognizes gga tcc sequence and cleaves it after first g let's say you bought the smallest pack of enzyme that is 10000 units which comes at 55 dollars company supplies 10x buffer along with the enzyme companies also provide literature on enzyme and reaction condition as a small booklet and sends it along with enzyme package else you can always access the literature online well here the reaction conditions say that enzyme and dna should be mixed in one x buffer supplied with the package and incubate at 37 degrees celsius it also says that bam h1 enzyme may show star activity at glycerol concentrations more than 5% let's see how star activity affects the calculations involved in setting up restriction assays bam h1 normally identifies sequence gga tcc and cleaves it however if the glycerol concentration in the reaction digestion assay increases to more than 5% bam h1 loses its specificity instead of gga tcc now it will identify sequences nga tcn where n can be any of the four nucleotides a t g or c let's imagine bam h1 cuts a particular dna which looks like this upon gel electrophoresis however upon star activity the same restriction digestion will look somewhat like this you will end up with more bands because bam h1 has become non-specific and identifies many more sites to cut than simply gga tcc of course you don't want that to happen and you can avoid star activity by doing careful calculations why do companies add glycerol to, rest to restriction enzymes anyways all the commercially sold restriction enzyme vials contain 50 percent enzyme and 50 percent glycerol 
glycerol is added because it is antifreeze and keeps the solution in liquid form even when you store it at minus 20. Since you will repeatedly bring the vial in and out of minus 20 and thereby subject the vial to freeze thaw cycles, ordinarily it will result in formation and dissolution of ice which will eventually damage restriction enzyme protein causing loss of its activity. Thus glycerol protects damage to enzyme upon repeated freeze thaw cycles. Now let's move on to see how to avoid star activity. BAMH1 will also come with a suggested restriction assay system or you can get it online. This particular assay suggests us to make 50 microliters final volume in which restriction enzyme makes 1 microliter. Protocols clearly suggest that restriction enzyme volume in a digestion assay should never be more than 10%. Why is that so? All the commercially sold restriction enzyme vials contain 50% enzyme and 50% glycerol. Let's say enzyme solution consists of only 10% of the total restriction assay volume. Since we know that enzyme solutions consists of 50% glycerol, that means glycerol will make 5% of the total restriction digestion assay. Thus, as long as your restriction enzyme solution doesn't exceed 10% of the total restriction assay volume, glycerol will not exceed 5% and you will be safe from star activity. Let's imagine that you assembled 50 microliter of restriction digestion assay. So 10% of it will be 5 microliter. So as long as you are adding 5 microliters or less of restriction enzyme to this mixture, you will be safe from star activity. This can also be easily pipetted and probably that's why most of the companies suggest a restriction assay system of 50 microliters. Now we can start assembling the restriction digestion assay system. It's pretty simple. Make a chart with three columns. In the first column, list all reagents involved which are water, buffer, DNA and enzyme. First column also says what should be the final concentration of each reagent in the final assay system. Middle column tells you the stock concentration of each reagent. You can find these with the literature or label that comes with the restriction enzyme and its buffer. Stock concentration of DNA will vary and it will depend upon DNA that you extracted and measured using spectrophotometer. Let's say the total volume of assay system you want to assemble is 50 microliters. Water is added to make up the volume to 50 microliters and hence it will be calculated in the end. What you need to do is to calculate how much amount of each reagent or stock reagent you need to aliquot and add into the reaction tube so that they come to their working concentration upon making up the entire volume to 50 microliters. Okay, let's see what I mean by that. Let's do calculations for restriction buffer. Stock concentration is 10x and obviously working concentration is 1x. So you need to dilute 10x buffer into 1x buffer. Please see earlier video to understand this concept better. We will do it by the formula C1V1 is equal to C2V2 where C1 is the concentration of stock any buffer which is 10x. V1 is the volume of stock any buffer which we don't know. This is the aliquot which you need to take from stock buffer 
and put it in the reaction assay. C2 is the concentration of working any buffer which is 1x and V2 is the volume of working any buffer which is 50 microliters in our case. So according to the formula C1 V1 is equal to C2 V2 what we get is 10x into V1 is equal to 1x into 50 microliters. 10x goes to the other side and goes to the denominator and what we get is 5 microliters. So we aliquot 5 microliters of restriction buffer and add it to the re reaction tube. We won't add water to make up the volume to 50 microliters yet as we need to add more reagents. Now let's calculate how many microliters of DNA solution needs to be added. Let's say when you extracted DNA from bacteria and measured by spectrophotometer, you got 0.2 micrograms per microliter concentration of DNA, which is stated in the middle column. According to first column, you want to digest 2 micrograms of DNA. That means you need to aliquot that many microliters of liquid from stock DNA that contains 2 micrograms of DNA. We will do it by ratio and proportion. 1 microliter of stock DNA solution contains 0.2 micrograms of DNA. So how many microliters of stock solution will contain 2 microgram of DNA? Since it's a directly proportional relationship, we will multiply the outer numbers and inner numbers and this is what we get unknown microliters into 0.2 micrograms DNA is equal to 1 microliter into 2 micrograms of DNA 0.2 micrograms of DNA goes the other side goes into the denominator and what you get is 10 microliters thus we will aliquot 10 microliters of DNA stock solution and add to the reaction tube. Now let's calculate how much enzyme we need to add. Company literature suggests that 10 units of enzyme is sufficient to digest 1 micrograms of DNA. And what you have bought here is 10,000 units of enzyme at 20,000 units per ml concentration. Whereas 10 units of enzyme is sufficient to digest 1 micrograms of DNA. However, you are digesting 2 micrograms of DNA and hence 20 units will be appropriate for restriction digestion. I should add here that restriction in restrict reaction incubation time given here is 1 hour. What you can do is instead of using lot of enzyme such as 20 units you can take less of enzyme and simply incubate the reaction mixture for a longer time sometimes people digest dna even overnight however for calculations sake we will use 20 units here company supplies enzyme at 20000 units per ml or 20,000 units per 1,000 microliters, removing three zeros in the numerator and denominator, we get 20 units per microliter of enzyme solution. That means in every microliter of enzyme that we have bought from NEP, we will get 20 units of enzyme. Since we are going to digest two micrograms of DNA for which we need 20 units of enzyme, all we, are, all we need to do is to aliquot out 1 microliter of enzyme solution. Now we need to make up the volume to 50 microliters. That means we need to add the rest of water. And to do that, we simply add 5 plus 10 plus 1 and subtract it from 50, which gives us 34 microliters. Thus, we need to add 34 microliter water to make it up, make, make up the volume to 50 microliters. 
that's how we get the amount of nucleus free water that we need to add once you mix all the components spin it lightly in a microfuge and subsequently incubate the tube in a water bath at 37 degrees celsius